Uh, I'm Phil Pollard. Um, uh, my day job, I am Heritage Career Pathways Manager at Historic England. I'm also on the uh, committee for the Early Careers Special Interest Group, and I'm one of the vice chairs of the Degree Accreditation Committee. So this idea of a sustainable profession is obviously very interesting to me. I often uh, describe to people when they ask what do I actually do in my job is that my job is to sit and despair about career pathways in heritage. Um, obviously rather tongue in cheek, but going through the conference, this it was great to be back, great to speak to people, but um, lots of despair. Um, we had a really interesting session about sustainable futures yesterday. Um, lots of facts and figures from early careers colleagues who don't think we have a sustainable profession. So a bit of despair there. Um, went to the archaeosexism uh, ex exhibition, more despair. Um, and we had a really great session this morning, kind of mapping career pathways and having a bit of discussion, which got uncomfortable and quite challenging. So a bit more despair there. Um, and then Ben mentioned ethical offsetting, so more despair. However, Something happened yesterday that I didn't expect. I met Mr. Motivator. Half the room's going, what are you talking about? The other half are giggling. Anyone who doesn't know, Mr. Motivator was a uh, man in the 1990s who was on TV in the mornings and did keep fit, wearing really jazzy kind of lycra, more bandanas. He was here in the hotel. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I got a photo with him and told him to come and have a look at, the actually, when I said, will you come and do an um, impromptu keep fit session for us in our lunch break? Uh, and here he is. Oh, no, his answer was, I will if you pay me enough. Um, which was quite fitting because that's what my early careers colleagues have been saying about working in archaeology for the past month. Um, but what he did say is, what are you again? And said, Chartered Institute for Archaeologists Conference. And he said, that sounds really boring. So obviously I convinced him it wasn't talked about, you know, very, very simply he talked about, it's all about our understanding our past and actually understanding how that affects us in the present. And he's like, oh, okay, okay, okay. So he came and had a little wander around the store holders. Now I think what he was doing was touting for free stuff. Um, but still, we've now got a new person potentially interested in archeology span and it's Mr. Motivator. And so at these moments of despair I've had, I've gone back to remembering I met Mr. Motivator and thinking, well, actually, why do I despair? I despair because I actually care. And so out of my despair comes motivation. And that's my key takeaway from the conferences. Anything I've heard that made me think, oh. actually what I force myself to do is, okay, what can I do about that? And that's what I want everybody to leave with. Anything you've heard to think, oh, that was not great, or, oh, that's interesting. Don't just stop here. Don't just go, next year we'll come back and see what's going on. Actually take that actually get motivated, actually see what you can do to make, make a change, do something small, move forward. And that's my thoughts. Thank you very much. Um, unexpected turn of events there, but that was very interesting. Um, next up, Kenneth Aitchison. Uh, thank you, Stephen. I'm Kenneth Aitchison, and I'm here as the Chief Executive Officer of FAME, the Federation of Archaeological Managers and Employers. I, I, that's what you were revealing. Okay, yes. Stop it, Phil. Um, yeah, so we're from the Trade Association. And, okay, very interesting to try to follow Phil there. Also, astonishing to me that I'm thinking, I'm about to, right, I, I feel really positive. I think this has been really good, this conference. I mean, my, my first comment is, it is especially aimed at CIFA staff colleagues and CIFA volunteer colleagues. Conference now, and conference last year were better than conference before the change. In, in the olden days, conference content was duller. And the band here, and when we were in Bath, sessions have actually been interesting and that people have been there and being engaged and rooms have been full and people have been asking questions. Never used to be like that. Conference used to be that the, the yeah, those of us in the front tables would come and swap war stories, and we would we would we would go off and drink in darkened corners and mutter to ourselves. 
Now, there is still a good level of interaction in, in the fringes at the, at the conference, but it's, that's not what it's, it seems to be all about. So, thank you, Siva. Conference is, conference is better. It's also then been interesting to think about who is here and who is not here. Um, many of us, many of us, okay, here is the Chief Executive of FAME. I've been looking around to see how many FAME members have been represented at the conference. Not as many as I would have hoped, actually. It's been interesting, but then, again, it's interesting to see who makes the commitment and who makes the commitment, whether that means of their senior staff or all staff to be able to attend. All staff is an exaggeration, but staff at all, all levels are able to attend or not. So that has been, that has been, uh, that has been another interesting point. And the other positivist start to my comments is that the conference has actually been really forward looking. It's been thinking about taking, taking things forward and changing policy and changing the way things are done. It has not been as retrospective or, or introspective as it might have been. Right. When I get to the end of a comment, another comment about reasons why we should have been looking back, but thinking about the different sessions, the sustainability session, it was good. It was good. It was, uh, yeah, as colleagues have already said, there's in many sessions, there's been feeling of moving towards common purpose and common thinking about things and how we'll go forward. The sustainability session didn't quite talk about actually the challenges in terms of doing archaeological work. It didn't quite talk about things that we all that we feel aware of but don't dare discuss yet. We don't know what biological net gain will mean for archaeological work. Is this going to end up changing the way that we have to do things? We didn't we talked about carbon net zero. We didn't really talk about actually what changes we will have to make and how carbon accounting is going to fall on the archaeological employers or whether it should. We didn't talk about that fact that there, when we're doing a carbon accounting, there are so many different things, different ways that we are, we are adding to our footprint and almost all of them are, are a sideshow apart from plant hire. Plant hire, enormous diesel machines, enormous trenches being opened up is fundamentally archaeology's carbon footprint. And so we need to be, we here is where we need to be talking about where, how best to do work. And again, back to being positive, that's what this, 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 this conference has been, I think, good. It's been moving towards, much more towards talking about work and examples of how we do things. The ethics session, again, of course, I have to be selective on the basis of which sessions I was in, I thought, again, the ethics session seemed to feel like we were moving towards commonly shared held perspectives, commonly good feelings about ways to go forward. I personally didn't like any idea that we might change any of CIFA's rules in ways that affect the way that CIFA ROs do their business, but rules about archaeological quality is fine. The broader discussion about ethical relativism and the lack of universality in terms of ethics and there is no one ethical rule book and places where we might work might have different ethical codes a, other a group like this in another country might think that we are being very unethical in our behavior here that there there are unmarried men and women in the same room there are, uh, drinking alcohol has been actively encouraged throughout the course of the conference and how dare we how colonialist of us, is it still going to be to keep insisting that our, our ethics are the right ethics? And that was part of my feeling about the, the ethics session and discussion of the code of conduct. And anyone who was there will have heard me say this, that I don't think, yes, we, have a, we should have commitment to ethics. No, those, those ethics cannot be measurable because they, they are personal and individual and contingent. We can be ethical, but being ethical should not be encoded into rules and regulations and discipline. Some people agreed with me. The thinking about other sessions that we were, we've been in. Today, today has brought another positive feeling for me about this whole conference. I was in the early careers session. It was a really good session. What has been positive here for me is that early careers group not just early careers committee who all sat here, but that early careers practitioners have been so visible and engaged throughout the project, uh, project uh, conference, not just in the early careers session, 
but pe people have been contributing val valuably in the pre and in a way that has been appreciated, I think, in every session. And this has to be a, a good thing that CIFA becomes increasingly more something where everyone at every stage and, and every part of archaeology is feels able to contribute to. And the inter international practice group was really good and was, again, useful stuff about actually ways to do work and the idea that we had a phone call from Jay, Car uh, Jay Carver calling in online to ask about elephant-proof fences on high-speed electrical railways was a, a remarkable moment for the conference. Okay. That's my broad thoughts about the, my thoughts and my thoughts from a fame perspective about the content of, of conference. Thinking about where we are and archaeology as a whole and things that we're not thinking about. And this is why I think we do, we do need a little bit of retrospective review at some point. The, the world is not the change, is not the same since the change and archaeology is not the same since the pandemic. Arche our work, archaeological work during the pandemic was inconceivably busy. The, the, the commercial firms were inconceivably busy and were working at 110% and all the way through and into the immediate post-pandemic time. We've been in a situation which has been pretty much unprecedented in terms of how difficult it is to hire. It is very difficult to recruit people. This actually pl places our early careers uh, colleagues at, at, in a good situation. It's a seller's market when it comes to your, to your labour and your skills and your abilities. So, but we, we haven't really talked about things like that. We haven't talked about the fact that it is difficult to hire and it is difficult to retain. And this makes it difficult for, the, for businesses to sustain operations functionally, sustainably. So much more money has come in during the pandemic and immediately after. Later this year, State of the Archaeological Market will be published, which is put out jointly by FAME and by CIFA. It's going to tell us that the amount of money flowing into commercial archaeology last year has, is at a record levels of 270 million pounds, it might be the number we have. It'll have gone up by more than 8% in a year. It's astonishing. Inflation was 9%. We didn't, we didn't make any progress. We are, we, are not, we are not as rich as we were at the point at the end of the first year of the pandemic. We're not, making, we're not managing to stay ahead of the game, which is frustrating. The, in terms of all of the rest of the, the world, we do have to, I think every conference, we have to think about politics and economics. Think about these things quite a lot, but we all collectively should think about it. After the pandemic, we are in I say a different world that way, and we are, at the, in terms of the UK government, we are stuck for this year and next year in a political and economic situation which I've heard described as being long Boris. We are in we are in in a in a in a place where the government is dares not act yet is the the econ why the economy slides, and I think we we have to think about actually, sometimes we need to think about what this actually means for us, for archaeology and going forward. But overall, I can't believe that I am not being Eeyore and I'm thinking that this was a good and positive and really good and useful conference. So thank you all colleagues. I shall hand over the microphone.